The Baltic languages belong to the Balto-Slavic branch of the Indo-European language family. Baltic languages are spoken by the Balts, mainly in areas extending east and southeast of the Baltic Sea in Northern Europe. Scholars usually regard them as a single language family divided into two branches, Western Baltic and Eastern Baltic. Duh. The range of the Eastern Baltic linguistic influence once possibly reached as far as the Ural Mountains, but this hypothesis has been questioned. Old Prussian, a Western Baltic language that became extinct in the 18th century, has possibly retained the most number of properties from Proto-Baltic. Although related, the Lithuanian, Latvian and, particularly, Old Prussian lexicons differ substantially from one another, and as such they are slash were not mutually intelligible. Lack of intelligibility is mainly due to a substantial number of false friends and different uses and sources of borrowings from their surrounding languages. Within Indo-European, the Baltic languages are generally classified as forming a single family with two branches, Eastern and Western Baltic. However, these two branches are sometimes classified as independent branches of Balto-Slavic itself. Balto-Slavic languages distribution of the Baltic tribe c. 1200 AD just before the coming of the Teutonic Order. Baltic territory extended far inland. It is believed that the Baltic languages are among the most conservative of the currently remaining Indo-European languages, despite their late attestation. Although the various Baltic tribes were mentioned by ancient historians as early as 98 CE, the first attestation of a Baltic language was c. 1369, in a Basel epigram of two lines written in Old Prussian. Lithuanian was first attested in a printed book, which is a catechism by Martinez Masvidas published in 1547. Latvian appeared in a printed catechism in 1585. One reason for the late attestation is that the Baltic peoples resisted Christianization longer than any other Europeans, which delayed the introduction of writing and isolated their languages from outside influence. With the establishment of a German state in Prussia, and the mass influx of Germanic settlers, the Prussians began to be assimilated, and by the end of the 17th century, the Prussian language had become extinct. After the partitions of Poland, most of the Baltic lands were under the rule of the Russian Empire, where the native languages or alphabets were sometimes prohibited from being written down or used publicly in a Russification effort. Distribution of the Baltic languages and the Baltic speakers of modern Baltic languages are generally concentrated within the borders of Lithuania and Latvia. And in emigrant communities in the United States, Canada, Australia and the countries within the former borders of the Soviet Union. Historically the languages were spoken over a larger area, west to the mouth of the Vistula River in present-day Poland, at least as far east as the Dnieper River in present-day Belarus, perhaps even to Moscow, and perhaps as far south as Kiev. Key evidence of Baltic language presence in these regions is found in hydronyms that are characteristically Baltic. The use of hydronyms is generally accepted to determine the extent of a culture's influence, but not the date of such influence. The Mordvinic languages, spoken mainly along western tributaries of the Volga, show several dozen loanwords from one or more Baltic languages. These may have been mediated by contacts with the eastern Balts along the river Oka. The eventual expansion of the use of Slavic languages in the south and east, and Germanic languages in the west, reduced the geographic distribution of Baltic languages to a fraction of the area that they formerly covered. The Russian geneticist Oleg Balinovsky speculated that there is a predominance of the assimilated pre-Slavic substrate in the genetics of East and West Slavic populations, according to him the common genetic structure which contrasts East Slavs and Balts from other populations may suggest that the pre-Slavic substrate of the East Slavs consists most significantly of Baltic speakers, which predated the Slavs and the cultures of the Eurasian steppe according to archaeological references he cites. Though Estonia is geopolitically included among the Baltic states due to its location, Estonian is a Finnic language and is not related to the Baltic languages, which are Indo-European. The epigram of Basel, oldest known inscription in Prussian language and Baltic language in general, middle of 14th c. The Baltic languages are of particular interest to linguists because they retain many archaic features, which are believed to have been present in the early stages of the Proto-Indo-European language. However, linguists have had a hard time establishing the precise relationship of the Baltic languages to other languages in the Indo-European family. Several of the extinct Baltic languages have a limited or non-existent written record, their existence being known only from the records of ancient historians and personal or place names. All of the languages in the Baltic group were first written down relatively late in their probable existence as distinct languages. 
These two factors combined with others have obscured the history of the Baltic languages, leading to a number of theories regarding their position in the Indo-European family. The Baltic languages show a close relationship with the Slavic languages, and are grouped with them in a Balto-Slavic family by most scholars. This family is considered to have developed from a common ancestor, Proto-Balto-Slavic. Later on, several lexical, phonological and morphological dialectisms developed, separating the various Balto-Slavic languages from each other. Although it is generally agreed that the Slavic languages developed from a single more or less unified dialect that split off from common Balto-Slavic, there is more disagreement about the relationship between the Baltic languages. The traditional view is that the Balto-Slavic languages split into two branches, Baltic and Slavic, with each branch developing as a single common language for some time afterwards. Proto-Baltic is then thought to have split into East Baltic and West Baltic branches. However, more recent scholarship has suggested that there was no unified Proto-Baltic stage, but that Proto-Balto-Slavic split directly into three groups, Slavic, East Baltic, and West Baltic. Under this view, the Baltic family is paraphyletic, and consists of all Balto-Slavic languages that are not Slavic. This would imply that Proto-Baltic, the last common ancestor of all Baltic languages, would be identical to Proto-Balto-Slavic itself, rather than distinct from it. In the 1960s Vladimir Toporov and Vyacheslav Ivanov made the following conclusions about the relationship between the Baltic and Slavic languages, these scholars. Theses do not contradict the Baltic and Slavic languages' closeness and from a historical perspective specify the Baltic-Slavic languages' evolution. Finally, there is a minority of scholars who argue that Baltic descended directly from Proto-Indo-European, without an intermediate common Balto-Slavic stage. They argue that the many similarities and shared innovations between Baltic and Slavic are due to several millennia of contact between the groups, rather than shared heritage. Place of Baltic Languages According to Wolfgang P. Schmidt, 1977 The Baltic-speaking peoples likely encompassed an area in Eastern Europe much larger than their modern range, as in the case of the Celtic languages of Western Europe, they were reduced by invasion, extermination and assimilation. Studies in comparative linguistics point to genetic relationship between the languages of the Baltic family and the following extinct languages. The Baltic classification of Dacian and Thracian has been proposed by the Lithuanian scientist Jonas Basan Avasius, who insisted this is the most important work of his life and listed 600 identical words of Balts and Thracians. His theory included Phrygian in the related group, but this did not find support and was disapproved among other authors, such as Ivan Deridanov whose own analysis found Phrygian completely lacking parallels in either Thracian or Baltic languages. The Bulgarian linguist Ivan Deridanov, who improved the most extensive list of toponyms, in his first publication claimed that Thracian is genetically linked to the Baltic languages and in the next one he made the following. Classification, the Thracian language formed a close group with the Baltic, the Dacian and the Pelasgian languages. More distant were its relations with the other Indo-European languages. And especially with Greek, the Italic and Celtic languages, which exhibit only isolated phonetic similarities with Thracian, the Tocharian and the Hittite were also distant. Of about 200 reconstructed. Thracian words by Deridanov most cognates appear in the Baltic languages, mostly in Lithuanian, followed by Germanic, Indo-Aryan, Greek, Bulgarian, Latin and Albanian. The cognates of the reconstructed Dacian words in his publication are found mostly in the Baltic languages, followed by Albanian. Parallels have enabled linguists, using the techniques of comparative linguistics, to decipher the meanings of several Dacian and Thracian place names with, they claim, a high degree of probability. Of 74 Dacian place names attested in primary sources and considered by Deridanov, a total of 62 have Baltic cognates, most of which were rated certain by Deridanov. For a big number of 300 Thracian geographic names, most parallels were found between Thracian and Baltic geographic names in the study of Deridanov. According to him the most important impression make the geographic cognates of Baltic and Thracian the similarity of these parallels stretching frequently on the main element and the suffix simultaneously, which makes a strong impression. Thanks for watching.